So this is the self-development with tactics. Book. So today we are gonna go ahead with first things first and yeah I'm really looking forward to it and uh, we are gonna see whether it is a good one, whether it is a bad one, whether it is something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it and I'm gonna go ahead with the next quote unquote headline. If uh, only you have goals with principles and a vision for the future, you can reach them. Have you ever taken a year's decision you didn't complete? Many people in the new year are simply putting personal goals such as more work or more exercise to turn quickly to their old habits. So it doesn't have to be new years. People always tend to set goals that they wouldn't reach. Sometimes even they reach, uh, the results may cause dissatisfaction. For instance, the Soviet government wanted to decrease alcohol consumption, so put the restriction on sales in the 1980s. As a result, alcohol consumption decreased, but narcotic consumption increased. The goal was reached with a high cost. So what is the difference between goals that are reached and goals that are reached in a positive way? First of all, you need to identify the what, why and how to make your goal consistent with your principles. So here is the right thing. What, for the right reason, why and uh, in the right way, how. So the right thing, what, the right reason, why and the right way, how. For example, imagine what the meaning of maintaining a healthy body for you is. In this case, while your why may come from feeling good and being an example for your children, your how may be changing your eating habits and exercising regularly. You have to make sure your goal is yours and you have control over it in addition to finding your uh, in addition to finding your what, why and how. You can't have the ability to change the per uh, the president's foreign policy, but you can have control over your body and personal habits. Finally, you should give importance to your goal instead of rushing for it. Sometimes your goal might take years to complete, like an example of the fact that you're overweight and want to become fit. The important thing is that you are de dedicated because you understand that your goal, like being healthy, will have an impact on your life and that you really want to work for it. Yes, Indeed, you know, there always has to be a reason, an intrinsic reason why you want to do something. Of course, if somebody makes you do something, then you're probably not going to work on it as hard as you can, since it is not necessarily something that you for yourself want to have, but it is something the other person wants you to do, basically. And the next point, you need, to, you need to find the right perspective and act with integrity to make the right decisions. You need to use the right perspective when making important decisions. For instance, a good photographer uses different lenses to get the right perspective for each one with the purpose of taking nice pictures. When people make decisions or plans, they tend to use one perspective. A uh, quote-unquote close-up view is used for immediate decisions like deciding what they eat in a dinner or wide-angle view is used for long-term goals like planning their five years. The best solution is to combine these two perspectives by planning in weekly terms. You can determine a time for things that are important to you such as work, family or leisure by creating a weekly calendar which provides proper attention throughout the week without certain specific hours for your activities. Also, you can try to combine your goals whenever you can. For instance, let's think you have to cook dinner, meet your neighbors and prepare a new recipe for an upcoming reception. Uh, how the situation is stressful? You need to have good perspective here and combine these activities. Make the new recipe for tonight's dinner, make extra to give to the neighbors and to what and take to the reception. Oh yeah. You should also follow your principles while using the right perspective. As an example, your friend calls you with a serious problem and your plans to stay home and read that night. What would you do? You would probably prefer going to your friend rather than staying and reading because of the value of friendship and reliability. Sometimes staying with your principles, which is called having integrity in the moment of choice, may be more important to your plan. Thanks to this integrity, we are able to make good choices. But I mean, I do have to say, um, like if it is a severe problem, then you should definitely go to your fucking friend and then help them out. But if it is like, you know, do you want to drink with us and stuff like that, then uh, maybe, yeah say no and be like well i actually wanted to read today and um you know i've been struggling to do this for quite some time maybe i don't know like be vulnerable 
be vulnerable in those situations because people can fucking understand. You know, we all human beings. Of course, some are more empathetic than other ones. And um, some are really not empathetic just at all. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, tell them. Tell them they're going to understand. Of course, please value your fucking relationships. It is such an incredibly important thing. Like, it is insanely important. Something that I've missed out for quite some time. Fortunately, I've been able to get back to the whole thing. But um, don't, 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 don't uh, neglect to see it and don't neglect to spend time with your friends. Um, especially when it is about just love relationships. Like, okay, you know, I do uh, have to take care of my uh, spouse or some shit and um, you just don't do anything with friends anymore and stuff like that it's not good because guess what when your relationship your love relationship ends you are fucked you know because then there is nobody and being like whoa hey guys i'm back i don't know if they're gonna be so happy about that you know being like okay you know i don't have anything to do so i'm gonna come to you and um, yeah not cool you should prefer uh, interdependence and cooperation rather than independence and competition. Life always offers us competition in many areas, such as getting the best grades and the best job or being smart and prettier. This approach is unhealthy and causes focusing on independence and comp competition, which impacts us negatively. People rush to get things done because they have to achieve everything alone, so it causes competition. They do not spend time or that time to eat healthily, but they run into an appointment by getting fast food that proves us their rush to life. This rush to love by jumping into one relationship to another and run away when things become difficult instead of working through it. Unfortunately, there are many negative effects of this lifestyle. For instance, a bad diet causes health problems or couples who choose easy way rather than working through difficulties leads to divorce. We need to focus on independence, interdependence and cooperation instead of being driven by independence and competition. We need to accept interdependence as a good thing and that comes from the four basic human needs. Living, loving, learning and leaving a legacy. These are all related to relationships with others. So we can say that everyone needs others to stay alive, healthy and happy. And I, I, there is nothing more important than I've, that I've realized in the past three years. This explains, or first of all, this and second of all, in the past three months. This explains why the concepts of interdependence and cooperation are important, particularly. For instance... When we work independently, we focus on our winning and someone's losing. However, focusing cooperation, focusing on cooperation provides win-win situations, which are much easier. As a, as a result, interdependence and cooperation are more positive when compared to the perception of everything as a competition. For example, consider two people working through their marriage. Many couples face with this, uh, many couples face with the serious problems when their honeymoon stages are over and they even get divorced. However, if couples succeed in working together, sharing a vision and valuing cooperation, their marriage even comes stronger when the problem appears. So you should focus on the long term and immediate benefits of working cooperatively with the people in our lives instead of seeing them as uh, competitors. Being a strong personal leader goes through strengthening that's around you. All of us have leadership roles for others in our lives, such as parents and parent-child relationships or employees and employee-colleague relationships. In such situations, you have to empower those you lead to be a good personal leader. Although empowerment is not possible to be instilled directly to anyone, you can allow them to strengthen by providing appropriate conditions such as trust, respect and honesty that naturally lead to empowerment in others. You can include others in the process of decision making to foster those conditions. For instance, imagine that one of your subordinates at work comes to you with a problem. You firstly try to ask them uh, what they can do and direct them to find their solution instead of trying to fix it immediately. As a result, their creativity becomes valuable and they feel respected and empowered to perform better in the future. Um, there needs to be mutual trust and accountability when you lead someone. Strict supervision and control might seem easy in the short term to get immediate results, but in the long term, it isn't productive. 
Results of the studies done with companies show that a high trust culture, quote unquote, provides employees feeling trusted by their employers and these companies perform better than companies with a low trust culture, which in my point of view just definitely makes sense. I mean, if you can trust in your employer, if you can trust as an employer to your employees, then it's just going to be better. It's just going to be good. You know, if there is just also in relationships, if you can't trust those people that you're in, in a relationship with, no good it's not good because um yeah you know trust is a really important thing period you know nothing else to say actually period there's a good way to build a high trust culture and that is getting feedback regularly from those you lead this shows that their opinions are important and respected also you will explore which areas you need to work more on which is definitely um very important i mean there's a win-win situation like you get something they get something everyone's hopefully happy so yeah there is a good way to build a high trust culture and that is getting feedback regularly from oh for example consider a ceo who listens to his employees feedback as he considers as he considered those feedbacks he values their judgments and proves him his humility his performance doesn't have to be perfect and he can't change always You'll find personal leadership roles in every aspect of your life. It can be family, work, or friends. So you need to base your relationships on trust, respect, and honesty to be a strong leader. Your different roles and tasks are part of a whole rather than being separate pieces. Strong principles provide you uh, improving with your quality of life by building you up, uh, by build, what, by guiding you about how you spend your time. It also directs you in a fulfilling direction. Most importantly, principles provide guidance and balance as a result of that guidance. Most people tend to separate their lives as work, family, free time, etc. The roles they play and the tasks they perform are in independent categories, but this type of perception may be limiting to your life. If you have only a good sense of balance in your life, you can get rid of your borders as being more productively. When people see their lives as divided into sections, they have difficulty transferring their skills between compartments. For instance, researchers show that a successful person in academia may have difficulty in the area that's not academic, even if the task is similar because they aren't used to thinking along the boundaries they just imagined. In reality, we have all related tasks and roles, if only uh, if you only focus on one, it will cause frustration. Imagine that an executive executive only focuses on her timetables and duties and if her employees interrupt her with questions she becomes easily annoyed however if she uses her employees questions and interruptions to strengthen her relationship with them performance in the company will get better the executive needs to be more balanced by combining her work and social roles it may seem hard but combining your roles in life is much easier for instance you're stressful because you are under pressure of exist of exercising more and, and spending more time with the children. However, your schedule is so full to do both of them. Here is the point. You can combine them by playing tennis together with your children. As a result of understanding the connectivity in your life, you will have new opportunities like this and you'll be able to use your time more effectively and efficiently. So don't uh, compartmentalize your life keep a balanced view and don't forget that everything is connected to have inner peace try to improve your quality of life and put things first what first things first yeah do you consider yourself to have inner peace does your life have balance joy and also meaning if you have problems related to discouragement pride or unrealistic expectations in your life you probably feel dissatisfaction because these are the most common preventers to have inner peace with which provides you a high quality of life so problems related to discouragement pride and unrealistic expectations sometimes all three of them happen at the same time think of yourself as a, as skilled in your work but when your supervisor retires you're not elected as the successor when someone else gets promoted you'll feel discouraged and embarrassed because of staying in your position. What can you do in here is that you can try to focus on humility and courage instead of shaming and you give up unrealistic expectations. Remember, someone else getting the promotion does not show that your performance isn't good enough, so you should also give up competing with others to prove your worth. In fact, 
you can think that your performance is really good, so your company wants you in that position. This kind of thinking provides you peace and improvement. And by the way, inner peace is is definitely very dependent on how you think about things and very important, but I am willing to talk about that for a bit after I went through this section. The biggest key to reaching inner peace is putting first things first. A professor gave a good example to the students to his students. He presented an empty jar first, then he filled it with rocks and again the students whether it was f- and asked the students again whether it was full or not. They said it was full. In response the professor poured in gravel which filled in the gaps between the rocks. Next he poured in the sand, finally he poured in water to completely fill even the tiniest gaps. So here's what we can learn from this. If we think that a jar what if we think that jar as the same time in our lives, the rocks are the important things and the sand, gravel and water as the rest. If we put in the sand and gravel first, which are unimportantly daily chores, there won't be a place for the rocks. However, when we put in the important things first, everything will fall into place. Well, I don't know. Like the thing is, there's definitely just multiple ways how you could inter- interpret this or interpret this. So, but yeah, um, I gotta have to say, there is a lot of time in life and care about your inner peace. And this is something that I want to talk about in a bit uh, or for a bit in the last few minutes of this episode. Um, if you're not peaceful in your mind, if there's when there is no peace in your mind, then there is also no peace in the world. From this moment on, when you feel bad internally, everything outside is just always going to be bad. If things outside are bad, but you don't really feel that they are bad, then you're just not affected by them. There is no thing. You don't feel bad. You don't feel just shitty. You don't feel discouraged. You don't feel jealous. Whatever it might be, if you don't internally feel like that, then uh, just outside things uh, don't really matter. But, I mean, it's easily said than done, of course, as, as it often is, but inner peace is important. And having perspective. And perspective, in my point of view, can lead to this type of inner peace. And so, yeah, important, very important. But yeah, uh, with that being said, I hope we're gonna, uh, hopefully, you've been able to just share some things that are of importance to you. So, I wish you the best health, health, happiness, and all success. And also, hope that you're gonna remind yourself and you're gonna be remembered, which basically means your legacy and basically means just being a nice person and then being remembered as a nice person, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. Three other questions that I'm having for you are why are you here, what are you trying to change, and what is bothering with the most these three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is pretty fucking cool. Um, one last question that I'm having for you is what could you say, particularly say, that is going to change somebody's life? What is it? What could you say? What could you communicate? What could you point out? Could you... Or could you write as well? I don't know if you're texting somebody. And if you know, okay, this is the right thing to do. This is something that you should be doing, maybe. It's not easy. It's never ever going to be easy. But it is right. Then, um, then yeah. Right things always feel good. And being a nice person, pointing nice things out is always a good thing. You shouldn't, you shouldn't not see the bad things either. You shouldn't be like, wow, you're the best person in the whole entire world. It is not the case. There's qualities and and, uh, very certain qualities that some people have. And and often I do just, this is something that I kind of need to point out. Sometimes it is difficult if you want to be nice because people might think like, oh, you are just hitting on me, for example. Um, It depends on the person. It heavily does. But point out fucking nice things, motherfucker. Point out nice things. You can say something nice and make just an entire day for a certain person just completely different. And that's amazing. And this is also one of the reasons why I do want to encourage you to do so and to do that. Because it's it's a bit of courage, maybe. I know it just, once again, depends on the person. And like one minute of your time, maybe not even. But it is just something that changes one person's entire day maybe even week maybe even month maybe even year and i don't know it also feels really good but yeah with that being said hope you're gonna see the next time 
Bye bye and thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Please stay safe and healthy. And also your family.